Thank you, Joyce, for a thrilling and joyful experience of the of the 30 years that I worked in China from two, uh, 1988 to 2004. Thank you so much. And to God be the glory for what you have given us. Thank you also to Bill and Roberta and Amos Young and many others who have given me this considerable privilege to be asked to respond to Joyce Lee's multifaceted, challenging essay. Like contemporary art that Joyce Lee champions, her essay must be read as a contemporary art piece itself. Questioning, challenging, peering in from one perspective, then suddenly from an opposing perspective, inviting us to view from this angle and then from that angle, all the time calling us deeper. Like a brilliant piece of art, so much query, so much challenge in such economic Econo excuse me, in such economy of space, requires one to dive beyond the lines, beyond her words, into something deeper, something inward that she wishes to share with us, exemplifying precisely what she highlights from Tolstoy, citing from Tolstoy here, to evoke in oneself a feeling one has once experienced and having evoked it in oneself, then by means of movements, lines, colors, and sounds or forms expressed in words, so to transmit that feeling that others may experience the same feeling, this is the activity of art. Transmitting a feeling so that others may experience that same feeling, this is what Joyce Lee's essay does brilliantly as art. So what is the deep feeling to which Joyce Lee's essay calls us as we view here, and I mean here, H-E-A-R, as we view or hear her essay? To attempt an answer at this, I wish to pull away for a brief moment to review who Joyce is, according to her own description, and who I, as one small viewer, hearer of her art is. I do empathize with the feelings she seeks to communicate. Lee shares that she is an American-born Chinese artist who is Christian and an academic. Lee shares that she's, quote, her specific bicultural political upbringing obstructs her identification as holy Chinese or holy America. She admits that she lives in four places, New York City, Beijing, Shanghai, and Hong Kong. Her residing in a multiplicity of places finds expression in her contemporary art practice that critiques how institutions of mass media, visual cult and visual culture shape notions of truth and understanding of the other. Speaking very humbly for myself, I too am American-born, an artist, a Christian, and an academic. Though my bloodline is not Chinese, I'm Scottish, Irish, and German, my immersion in Chinese language and culture for 50 years of academic life, living most of 16 years of that academic life in China, teaching at China's flagship universities from 1988 to 2004, I also could describe my life, as Joyce does, I, that a bicultural political upbringing obstructs identification as wholly American or Chinese. Like Lee, I also admit to living in four places. <laughs> you know that. Temple City, Grand Rapids, Beijing, and Nanjing. Like Lee, I, uh, excuse me, um, Residing in a multiplicity of spaces, my art, though, is quite different from Joyce's. For some years, I ha had the extraordinary privilege of studying and painting within the tra traditional Chinese landscape tradition 
in the lineage of Pu Xinyu. My teacher's teacher was Pu Xinyu himself, brother to the last emperor, Pu Yi. Like Joyce Lee's Chinese, excuse me, like Joyce's art, Chinese landscape painting also can give shape to truth and understanding of the other. So it is with a great deal of empathy and rejoicing, pun intended, that I view and hear Joyce's essay as art. So again, what is that, what is it that Joyce Lee's essay asks us to feel, to empathize with? To move from the periphery to the center, I simply offer five insights that Lee offers to which I give a resounding yes. First, Lee brings to our vision artworks exhibited at the fall 2017 Guggenheim ex exhibition entitled Art and China after 1989 Theater of the World. And these are precisely the years that I was living and teaching in China. The three artworks are Huang Yongping's Theater of the World, a cage for the survival of the fittest, Sun Yuan and Peng Yu's dogs that cannot touch each other, and Xu Bing's, Xu Bing's A Case Study of Transference. All three artworks voice an outcry from the depths of a people, in this case, the Chinese people, who have lived through an entire century during which every artifact of traditional Chinese life and thought has been intentionally smashed. What remains is three. Survival of the fittest, Huang Yong's cage. In that cage, adding to it the, the market, marketplace capitalism, which is so aggressive, so brutal, as to be lethal, we see the st struggle for survival of the fittest in Huang Yongping's cage. In Sun Yan and Peng Yu's dogs that cannot touch each other, a lack of any common cultural bond between persons makes it impossible for them to meet on these endless treadmills. And again, I lived through these eras. And then third, a blending of the shards of Chinese culture with all things Western, from modern analytic philosophy to Marxism, to Christmas cookies with Coca-Cola and Haagen-Dazs, this is Xu Bing's image of a boar and sow copulating while covered with a mishmash of Chinese characters and English. Again, from the oldest surviving civilization of humanity comes the cry, nothing is left. Who are we? How shall we live? It is this sense of being stripped of everything China has known that one may affirm wild, wild China of today. What a contrast with the five years of Chinese civilization designed precisely for the purpose of domesticating everything wild, everything brought to yield, everything tamed, transformed, conformed, to one unified way of living. The Chinese term that we translate into English culture as culture is Chinese wenhua, which means literally being transformed into the one unified great pattern of our living together. One billion people with one heart mind, as a plaque in Tiananmen Square reads. The second insight Joyce Lee shares with us is her linking of China gone wild with modern contemporary art gone wild. <laughs> art to today no longer depicts, but rather questions the brush itself by which it depicts, mm -hmm. challenges the ascetic that would seek harmony, and overturns hope with the aggressive query, why? Number three, roaming the cultural margins. Indeed, Makoto, Makoto Fujimura affirms artists as borders are border stalkers. Roaming the cultural margins, Lee's 
Third insight is that today's artists, Chinese, Pakistani, American, and one could add Yemeni, Ugandan, Honduran, are called to sever the link between art and the institutions of power and people of power. From this comes Lee's beautiful lament of the neo-colonial takeover, where the rich Chinese or rich Westerners buying up the best of wild, wild, contemporary, challenging, uh, critiquing art, domesticating that art by the very act of purchase. Number four, turning to Christian faith witness in China today, Lee re reviews the new book by Karsten Valla entitled The Politics of Protestant Churches and the Party State in China, God Above Party. Lee recounts Valla's own recounting of the tearing down of crosses across provinces of the old heartland of ancient China. Then suddenly, Lee alights on Valla's acknowledging a huge need for Christian mental health and counseling services. Al Duick, are you here? Do we, do we chance here upon a direction, a new direction in Lee's vision? Is there a glimmer of hope here, perhaps? Number five, continuing in this new turn of direction, Lee takes us to Shanghai's Two City Gallery, a name alluding to Augustine's city of God, Jerusalem, in contrast to the earthly city of Rome, Augustine's Rome. Desiring to be a good city today, today's Shanghai city planners bought into the new gallery's name. And as Lee puts it, the gallery pioneered, quote, an unprecedented creative platform for glass art that avoided negative associations and enabled the place to become a space where faith happens, resulting in the launching of two local churches where people still congregate today. Continuing in this same positive term, Lee concludes by taking us to, Stelico, excuse me, to Telescope in Beijing, a nonprofit project space located in the arts villages of Caochangdi, outside Beijing, serving emerging artists and building communities through creating art. The space's founder is James Elaine, whom Joyce and I and others here know, whose very light is art and mission at once. Quoting James Elaine now, God's purpose is my purpose, he says. His his, God's, mission is big. It includes good art, good installations, good food, good wine, and all these things. This is missiology, James says. Last August, I had precisely that kind of a joyful afternoon experiencing James Elaine's mission as art with his friends. Jimmy asks, don't you want to see God do miracles among you? He works through everything. And he works through left field, not through that thousand year old church pew. And here we receive Joyce Lee's final insight. Having looked into the abyss of everything broken and nothing left. Having taken the, both, the bold step to experience everything gone wild. She almost imperceptibly yet courageously turns away from that wild abyss to look for God. And she asks us to follow. But she says, don't look for him in all the old spaces. Don't be nostalgic, get over it. God's not there anymore. He's moved on. Do you not see him? There he is. There he is again. Oh, look, he's over there. Don't look for him pl in places you know. Look for him in places you don't know. Don't cling to the old forms. Don't cling to the dregs. Don't cling to the traces left behind. Hold on to his spirit. He's moving on. And surprisingly for me, this is precisely what a good traditional Chinese landscape artist also knows. All right. 
It is not about the painting. It's about the spirit of the person to whom the brushwork at one time bore witness. The spirit and the artist has moved on. Don't cling to the painting. As for mission in Christian art, Joyce Lee says without saying, it's not about mangers and stars. It's not about crosses and medieval churches. It's about the spirit of Jesus Christ who lives in you, in me, in this artist, in that artist, and the artist over there. And it's this spirit that is moving on. Don't cling to the art. Don't cling to the artist. Don't cling to the institution that supports the artist. Hold rather to the spirit as he lights the way, indeed heals the way through darkness wild and yet unknown. Thank you, Joyce, for your vision. Thank you, Joyce, for your contemporary Easter vision. To God be the glory. Thank you.